In our modern times, you need a graphics card for gaming. Of course, a capable processor and RAM is also important, but without a half-decent video card, there's not much gaming you can do. However, in the early days of PC gaming, it was the processor, the CPU, that mattered the most. The video card, well, you had to pick a display adapter that was compatible and supported. There were obviously some performance differences, but in the end of the day, upgrading the processor would give you the most benefit when it came to gaming. This all changed with the emergence of early 3D graphics chips, which offloaded the intensive computational tasks involved in rendering 3D graphics from the CPU to dedicated hardware. Whenever the PC industry transitions from one technology to a new one, there's a very interesting, at least to me, a very interesting transition period where sort of both technologies are supported. And that's what this video is about. We will focus on some games from the late 1990s that do support 3D accelerated graphics, but still have software rendering integrated. Quake 2 from 1997 is the first game we are checking out, developed by IT Software. Well, this is a first person shooter set in a science fiction universe. And well, all of us know and love Quake 2. We are running the game at 800 by 600. And to be honest, it looks and feels great. The graphics, yes, there's a difference. It's not as smooth, so when you look closely at the textures, we can see that they're not filtered, but this is one of those aspects that actually some of you prefer, that sharp pixelated look that we have been used to for a very long time. The color palette is also a little bit reduced. We have less colors to work with. We can see a little bit of banding going on, but again, when you play the game and everything is moving fast, this might not be a very big deal. I have some benchmarks here. So here we have Quake 2 running in software mode at various resolutions and we can see, yeah, the higher the resolution, the lower the performance. 800 by 600 seems to be a good blend between uh, visual fidelity and performance. We're getting 65.6 FPS and all the games that I've captured for this video are running at 800 by 600. Let's quickly go over the system. We have a Gigabyte motherboard for the AMD Socket 754 with a VIA chipset. This is my go-to Windows 98 test platform. The processor is a fairly capable Athlon 64 3400 Plus running at 2.4 gigahertz. We have 512 megabytes of DDR memory. And for the video card, we've got an S3 Verge with only four megabytes of VRAM. The job of this card is to just be a 2D display adapter. For sound, we've got a Creative Labs Sound Blaster Audigy with a optical output bracket. It goes directly into the RetroTINK 4K scaler that helped me out to do all the captures for this video. Croc is next, also released in 1997, developed by Argonaut Software. Croc Legend of the Gobos. It's a platformer featuring a small, well, a crocodile. And it's sort of one of those early 3D platform jump and run games, very similar to what you saw on the PlayStation. The reviews were a little bit mixed. I find the game very colorful and the graphics are beautiful. The performance is also nice. It runs silky smooth in software render at 800 by 600. The controls are a little bit hit and miss for me. Firstly, I'm not too much into platform games and maybe this game is a little bit easier with a controller. If you have uh, some experience with this game, do share down below. This game has been requested quite frequently in past videos. So finally, we're checking out Dark Forces 2 from 1997 and developed by LucasArts. Well, this is a game set in the Star Wars universe, a FPS game. And this is one game I remember playing back in the day. I had a Pentium 133 with a 3FX Voodoo card and I remember playing this game. The graphics, they look fine. I can't really tell too much of a difference between 
the hardware rendered and the software rendered version. Again, we don't get the texture filtering, but all in all, this game is extremely playable. Tomb Raider 2, well, this game doesn't need much introduction. 1997 is the release date developed by Core Design and the second game in the huge Tomb Raider series. The graphics are beautiful. We're running again 800 by 600. I also remember this game playing it back in the day. I had a Voodoo 2 on a Pentium 2 300, I believe. And the game doesn't lose much of its charm. Yes, we are getting the that raw, unfiltered pixel look. A lot of you like that look. And all in all, this is another game perfectly playable in software mode. Here we have Half-Life, released in 1998 by Valve. And well, another game that doesn't need introduction. This is actually the demo version and looks and sounds and plays perfectly fine. There is a option in the games for the sound. Make sure you enable the EAX environmental effects for some nice sound, especially over headphones. And yeah, I just played a little bit. It looks and feels exactly like I remember playing this game with 3D graphics. Again, a little bit rough and raw around the edges, but the performance is definitely playable. Unreal is next. This game, well, I wasn't aware that it actually supported software render and it looks beautiful. This is from 1998, developed by nothing other than Epic Games. 800 by 600 is the resolution and here we can see something really interesting. There's some sort of a software texture filtering happening. It gives us an interesting effect. It looks a little bit like interlacing, reminding me of the look of the first Voodoo cards. And the performance is great. I believe I ran the time demo benchmark around 45 to 50 FPS. So this game might be a little bit more demanding, but the experience, the mood, the graphics, everything still comes across even in the software rendered version. Shogo Mobile Armor Division is next from 1998, developed by Monolith Productions, a FPS game where, yeah, half of the game you play as a soldier on foot, but the other uh, half you are inside a giant battle mech. And yeah, various weapons, good story, interesting dialogue, and all in all, I think it's a fun game. Rune Gold is next, released in 2000. So this is one of the more modern games in the relative terms. Developed by Human Head Studios, it's a third person action adventure game. You're playing a Viking warrior. The graphics look beautiful. Again, this is a game I haven't played too much. It does seem a little bit challenging uh, in terms of where you need to go. It's definitely not like modern games with checkpoints and huge arrows showing you the way. So it's got that, yeah, easy, easy to learn, hard to master type feeling that many of these classic games have. Clive Barker's Undying is next, released in the year 2001 by DreamWorks Interactive. And this is a first person horror game. I haven't played it too much, but I know it has uh, received really good reviews. So it is popular in the community. And yeah, I wish I had some more time to check it out in more detail. I do get a feeling that this game struggles, is starting to struggle a little bit on this processor. It might need something faster. So guys, we had a look at some of these games that do have support for 3D accelerated graphics, but also let you play in software rendering mode. And to me, this is really exciting and interesting because it's that transition period where you can, yeah, check out various options. And whenever we have options, that's awesome. Gives us something to talk about, gives us something to experience and try out. Apart from curiosity and being a interesting topic for me personally, how useful is this? So if we look at the pricing situation, a 3D accelerator for Windows 98 for these games can be quite expensive these days, especially if you're chasing a 3DFX voodoo card. But we do have cheaper options looking at NVIDIA 
and ATI. So a card like a NVIDIA River 2 M64, for example, or a ATR Rage 128 Pro, these cards are still quite affordable and will handle most of these games quite well. But if you want a 3DFX Voodoo, then be prepared to pay a huge premium and you will struggle finding one. They're not that easy to find anymore. So software rendering gives you, yeah, a budget entry at experiencing these games. And also you don't, you're not dealing with the driver's uh, nightmare in some situations. Some of these games re received patches also throughout the lifetime and then certain visual aspects kept changing, sometimes even taking a step back. So the software render mode, it just works. I had zero issues. I didn't need to install any patches or drivers. It just works out of the box. So in terms of preservation and being able to just play, uh, launch these old games and just straight up playing them, yeah, it's a really set and forget experience. So there you have it guys. And now I wanna hear from you. Leave some comments down below. What is your take on software rendering? Do you maybe prefer playing games this way? Do you like that pixel unfiltered look? Leave your thoughts down below. I always enjoy hearing from you, having a coffee Saturday morning and going through your comments. And that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.